right, good afternoon, everyone. We'll call to order the City of Murfreesboro Board of Zoning Appeals a regular meeting for August 28, 2024. Uh, first item on our agenda is a determination of a quorum um, with four members of a five member board. We do have a quorum today. Uh, next item is the public comments. Uh, has there been anyone from the public that wishes to speak before our meeting gets started? Uh, Chair, Chair Young, we haven't heard from anyone. Okay. Next, we'll move to the consideration of the minutes from our regular meeting from July 24th, 2024. Those minutes were provided to the board members. Are there any changes necessary to those? No, sir. Hearing none, those minutes will stand as, as written. Uh, next, we'll move to old business. Uh, the first was an administrative appeal, uh, application Z24024 by Sean Henry representing AutoZone, uh, they were appealing a decision of the zoning administrator regarding whether a proposed use at 810 Northwest Broad Street constitutes distrib distribution of automobile parts and components warehousing. Um, this is not permitted in the commercial highway zone. Uh, Mr. Newman, I, th I think someone's going to give us an update on this application. Uh, I believe there's a agreement to defer is that yes where we uh, both the planning department and the uh, Sean Henry for AutoZone have agreed to defer um, if you'll remember last time we were working on um, trying to come to an agreement or the, the, the BZA wanted us to come to an agreement we're moving forward on that and uh, we still would like time so that we can um, work that out and bring something back to the BZA all right thank you we do we have a letter from uh, their attorney mr. Henry uh, agreeing to that, so I, I believe the procedure is for motion for deferral. Yes, I'll make a motion. Second, to defer. Have a motion and a second. Uh, would you call the roll for us? Ms. Foy. Aye. Mr. Tips. Aye. Vice Chair Halliburton. Aye. Chair Young. Aye. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Uh, so that application has been deferred. Uh, now we'll move on to new business. Uh, under special use permits, application Z24031 by Ms. Davina Akpamwosa, reconsidering a request for special use permit in order to operate a group daycare home in a duplex residential zone. Uh, this is for property at 2537 Summit Court. Uh, Mr. Aguilera, if you'd review that one for us. Yes, thank you, Chair Young. Our first item today under a new business uh, is a special a reconsideration of a special use permit request to operate a group group daycare home at the property of 2537 Summit Court. This application came before you last month during the July 24th uh, meeting, but as you may recall, uh, there was a sign, the sign notice and staff felt it uh, necessary to bring back for your rec uh, reconsideration or review, just out of the abundance of caution. Um, so as you all may recall, I have the application up here. As you all may recall, this, was, this request was to allow Ms. Davina uh, to open a group daycare home at her duplex property at 2537 Summit Court. This would allow for her to care up to 12 children and have an additional three part-time employees to help with that business. Um, between the July meeting and today, there has been no change to the information, the hours of operation, the number of children, employees, cars, or anything like that. There has been no change changed their application so the item that, has pre that was presented during that time and is being presented today is still the same. I just want to make sure that I was clear and understandable. Around 12 o'clock yesterday, um, staff, the staff did receive uh, from Ms. Davina a traffic impact study uh, for her application and that was immediately forwarded to our transportation department for their review. Um, however, because we received this midday yesterday, as you all know, the agenda went out Monday morning, and so this was after the agenda had been published and had been circulated and already, and so we had not time, we had not had time to include that in for your review, and staff had not had time to review that traffic impact study and share that with, uh, and discuss those findings with our transportation department. And so um, what we're recommending today is that you, we recommend a deferral 
until the next month meeting so we can give our time, uh, time to the transportation department to review that study, the data that, that was gathered, um, and be able to discuss what findings uh, came from that study. Um, staff also requests that the board notify the applicant that any additional supporting documents need to be received by the submittal deadline uh, for September, for that September meeting. And we wanted to specify that today because, again, um, should she have additional documentation brought to you all before today, whether it be the traffic impact study or any types of additional photos or other types of uh, documentation, that that be brought before the September meeting. Um, again, because that was not published in the agenda, we have asked Ms. Davina to bring that transportation, that uh, traffic impact study today, so that uh, it can be entered into the record and for, brought for your all attention for your review. But again, we are recommending a deferral until our transportation department can adequately and sufficiently review the study. Um, Ms. Davina is here. Should you all have any questions? Um, I am here as well, and um, we'll be happy to answer any kind of questions. So would there be a need for I'm just asking a public hearing for anybody that would like to speak, even though we may defer it, besides yes. the applicant? Yes, we still want you to hold the public okay. hearing. Okay. After the public hearing, again, staff's just giving our recommendation that it be deferred and okay. so that we could adequately review it. Yeah, and, okay. and holding that public hearing allows us to keep from holding another one next month and re-advertising it. Okay. Okay. Any further questions for Mr. Aguilera? Uh, Mr. V, anything you'd like to add to the application, feel free to come up to the podium. And Afternoon. Uh, John Barney uh, here from Ms. Davina. We're generally fine with the deferral to give you all a chance to look at that traffic impact study because I wasn't here at the last meeting. I saw it on YouTube, and it seemed like that was maybe the issue that was most of you had with this was the potential impact traffic-wise, and so that's why she went ahead and spent the money for this study to get it in front of you all. Thank you. So, do we catch your name? What was your name again, sir? John Farnes, B A R N E Y. Okay, thank you. Um, if there's no other comments from the applicants, we'll go ahead and, and conduct the public hearing. Uh, is there anyone here wishing to speak for or against this application? If you'd come forward. Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing and then open the floor for any further discussion. Uh, or a motion to defer so we can have all the proper information provided to us. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move to defer this uh, application to the next meeting. Second. All right, I have a motion and a second. And I have a question. What would be the uh, minimal time that, that the department needs to have all of her documentation in hand before it comes to a meeting? So, so we, what we would ask for there is it to be in by the submittal deadline, which would be September 9th. Um, that just gives um, the city's traffic engineer time to review the, the traffic study as well, and then planning staff to review any other documentation. Um, you know, I'm sure this isn't the only traffic study that we'll be reviewing in that time period. Uh, as a point of uh, I guess a question to the uh, our legal staff does this motion need to be amended to speculate to, to specify a date certain that uh, the documentation needs to be in the office? Uh, that that would help in in absence of a clarification we would have just the the general you know the general planning department rule of the submittal deadline but this would clarify similar to a scheduling order in court uh, that any any future evidence that can that will be considered by the board must be in by this date. Okay, that, that would help clarify. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to amend my motion to add uh, the the uh, documentation that the applicant would have to have would have to be in our office by September 9th. Second. All right. Any further discussion? All right. Would you call the roll for us? Ms. Ford. Clarif just question. We have a motion and a sec. Uh, we have an amended motion. So. Our vote should be on the amendment, and then we'd have to vote on the, the main motion. Correct? Yes, that's that's Robert's rule. So, so the we're voting on the amendment. Yeah. The, the, yes. The, the vote the vote now is on the amendment to the motion. Thank you. Would you call the roll for us? Miss Foy. Aye. Mr. Tips. Aye. 
Vice Chair Halliburton? Aye. Chair Young? Aye. All right, we get everything. Our reduction row there. So now, so now the, uh, what's, what, what's on the floor now is, is the motion as amended to defer with the scheduling deadline. Okay. Ms. Foy? Aye. Mr. Tips? Aye. Vice Chair Halliburton? Aye. Chair Young? Aye. All right. I think we've handled that one. Um, next, we'll move to application Z24033 by Ms. Kristen Frenza requesting a special use permit in order to operate a family daycare home in a single family residential RS12 zone. This is for property located at 2918 Rowellen Road. Um, I believe this, Mr. Donovan's. Yes, sir. Thank you, Chair Young. Uh, so if you remember, this is another one of the, the items that, that came before the body last month and because of the, the uh, sign notice issue, it, it's back this month. Um, so what I'm going to stick to today, unless the board wants some further detail, is where this application has changed since we, we heard it last month. Well, what's before you today, um, if you remember, this daycare is for seven, um, seven children at the, at the site. Last month when it was before you, there were two concerns of staff that were still outstanding. One is there was an open violation on the site where the um, applicant had installed a pool uh, in the edge of an easement without an issue. That has been resolved. Staff has actually issued a permit for the pool. The uh, public works inspectors have come out, taken a look at the site. Um, that, that easement's been uh, restored satisfactory for them. So that issue is, is resolved. That's the reason it's back on the, the agenda because your deferral said until indefinitely until that issue was remedied. So we have solved that issue. Um, on the screen in front of you, um, you're going to see an updated site plan. Our second issue was related to... They're kind of blinking, but they could just came back on. <laughs> All right, and if they can share my screen, because what I'm seeing is what's at the, the podium. Well, I will, while, while we're getting that sorted out... Where is, where? It's not working right now, so we're looking into it. Okay. All right, so I'll, I'll describe what, what's there. If you remember last month, there was a concern from staff that there was adequate uh, maneuvering space to back out of parking spaces that we were acquiring and pull into the public right away, which is one of the standards of applicability for, for this use. Um, the applicant has modified the site plan uh, to show two parking spaces and then an additional six feet on the other side of the driveway to total 22 feet. This gives enough space to meet our drive aisle and gives plenty of space for maneuverability um, around the uh, site for somebody to back out and pull into the, the public right away. So this is resolved staff's concern there. Uh, staff has um, reviewed all of the information, believes this request um, um, complies with our general rules of applicability as well as the uh, use specific for a family daycare home. Um, and staff has recommended an approval of this um, item with the following seven conditions. Private vehicles associated with the residence shall be parked within the garage to the extent possible during the hours of operation of the family home daycare to keep two required parking spaces available for drop-offs and pickups. This is simply so that we have those two spaces dedicated to the use during those hours. Uh, the special use permit for the family daycare home will allow for no more than seven children. The hours of operation shall be from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Friday. The family daycare home business shall not operate beyond those areas during the week and shall be closed on Saturday and Sunday. The family daycare home shall only employ the owner of the family daycare home use should the applicant wish to hire additional employees or increase the number of children enrolled in the daycare the applicant shall amend the special use permits and be subject to general standards as well as the specific standards for group daycare home use all child loading and unloading shall be done on the property and no parking associated with the family daycare home is permitted to be in the public right away the applicant shall contact <coughs> 
the city of Murfreesboro Building and Codes Department to re obtain any required permits for new construction and or remodeling and pass necessary inspections. The special use permit shall lapse upon sale or transfer of the property or if the owner, Kristen Friends, uh, ceases to reside at 2918 Roellen Drive. Um, also, an additional, um, some additional items for your consideration. You should have um, a document that's paper clipped together. There are several emails in there. One is stapled together. Um, these were emails that were initially included in your packet that was sent out Monday morning. I did have a, an email that came in yesterday that's on its own from Ms. Jill Morrow that is uh, an individual document that was new and it was not included in your packet. You just want to get those on the record um, and have them before you for your consideration. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions. I know the Ms. Frenza, the applicant, is here as well to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Donovan at this point? Hearing none, uh, Ms. Frenza, anything you'd like to add to the application? Hello. Uh, my name is Kristen Frenza. I'm the owner of 2918 Rowellen Road. Uh, in May, my family and I relocated to Murfreesboro due to my husband's new position in Mount Juliet. After researching the surrounding area, we chose Murfreesboro because of the significant need for affordable licensed daycare. We purchased our home with an extra room intending for me to continue my 12-year career as a family home daycare provider. I want to assure the board and the community of my commitment to operating a fully legal and licensed home daycare, unlike many unlicensed daycares in Murfreesboro. I am dedicated to complying with all the regulations and requirements necessary for approval. I have been working closely with the Department of Human Services to obtain a home daycare license and have completed all the required training. My home has passed state and local fire inspections as well as health and environmental inspections. And the final step to securing my license is obtaining a business permit, which is why I am here today. Um, I would like to address some concerns raised at the last meeting. Um, some concerns were raised about my home looking like a business but home daycares are actually designed to offer a home away from home feel with a nurturing environment regulated by the state and not meant to look like a daycare center. My home will remain looking like a home. Um, concerns were raised about the possibility of signage on my property. I believe it is, it is essential to preserve the residential character of my home in the neighborhood. Therefore, I will not be placing a sign on my house. Concerns were raised regarding the driveway potentially resembling a parking lot. My driveway will not have this appearance. I am simply extending the existing driveway to accommodate up to two more vehicles. This will provide sufficient space to accommodate daycare drop-offs and pickups and will comply with the city standards, which require that these activities occur on site and that vehicles do not back out onto the road. There were concerns that a home-based business might decrease property values. My research found no evidence to support this claim. Furthermore, my home will remain a residential property, not a commercial business. Concerns were expressed regarding traffic on Rowellen Road, particularly with respect to safety. However, data collected from our ring camera recordings over the past two weeks, taken at various times throughout the day, indicates an average of three to four vehicles passing by in a 15 to 20 minute window. This data suggests that the current traffic volume is not substantial enough to pose significant safety concerns. Additionally, with my plan to schedule drop-offs and pickups for each family and limit the number of vehicles to one to two at a time, the additional traffic generated by my business will not significantly impact the overall traffic flow. There will be no business-related traffic between 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. It was also noted that Rowellen Road is perceived as a cut-through and that access to my home may be limited. Rowellen Road is not considered a cut-through, as there are several alternative routes available to reach other parts of the neighborhood. I've included a map in my application illustrating three different routes for entering and exiting the neighborhood to and from my home. This map demonstrates that even with the potential addition of up to two vehicles at a time, scheduled with staggered pickup and drop off times, congestion will not be an issue. Currently, I am within the legal limit of caring for up to four unrelated children at a time in my home without a daycare license. Legally, I can watch four children in the morning and four different children in the evening, which would lead up to eight cars coming and going four times a day, all without requiring a special use permit or extended driveway space. While this arrangement is permitted, it would create a significant workload for me and generate more traffic compared to having a license for seven children. Therefore, granting me a special use permit for seven children 
would be more beneficial for both me and the neighborhood. In summary, my home daycare will not significantly impact neighboring properties, is well supported by essential public facilities and services, and will not harm any features considered important by the BZA. My property will have an on-site, off-street area for drop-offs and pickups, which will prevent cars from backing onto the road, and the backyard is secured with a six-foot privacy fence. I respectfully ask the board to review the information provided and recognize that my application fully meets the criteria for the special use permit. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Any questions for Ms. Frenza? I have a comment. As I did last time, uh, my sister lives near this house, so I'll abstain from uh, any conversation or vote on this application. All right, anything else for the applicant? No. All right, at this time, we'll conduct a public hearing. If there's anyone present wishing to speak for or against this application, if you'd come forward, give us your name and address, and provide us any comments you may have. Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing and open the floor for any further discussion or motion. I'll move to approve, subject to staff comments. Second. I have a motion and a second. Uh, would you call the roll for us? Ms. Foy? Aye. Mr. Tibbs? Aye. Chair Young? Aye. All right, that application is approved. Thank you for your time. <clears throat> All right, next we'll move to application Z24032 by Mr. Matt Taylor of SEC representing Fellowship Bible Church of Rutherford County. Uh, they're requesting an amendment to an existing special use permit for an existing institutional group assembly use in an RS-15 zone. Uh, this is for property located at 4232 Veterans Parkway. The application proposes to continue the use of an 8,190 square foot temporary modular building for an additional two years by a private school serving grades kindergarten through 12th in conjunction with the existing church. Uh, Mr. Aguilera, if you'd review that one for us. Thank you, Chair Young. Uh, as you said, this is a reconsideration of an amendment to an existing special use permit to allow an existing institutional group assembly uh, to allow them to continue the use of an 8,190 square foot temporary modular building for an additional two years to be used for their um, education purposes, for their academy, for Redeemer Classical Academy. Um, as mentioned previously with the, uh, our other applications on here, this came before you all during the July 24th meeting. Um, it is again, uh, has been brought back to you all for just, in a, just to be an uh, abundance of caution to say that it can be for the reconsideration and to ensure that it is properly reviewed and approved. Uh, no information between the July meeting and now no information has changed with this request. There is, uh, there has been no change to the modular building, um, the time frame to which they're requesting the extension, the height of it, or anything with the site plan that was done by uh, Matt Taylor of SEC showing the existing conditions of the modular building. Um, in review of the application for the general standards of applicability and the additional standards for institutional group assembly, staff finds the application is still um, compliant with the general standards and the additional standards for institutional group assemblies and staff's recommendation is uh, still the same we maintain the same position that uh, these standards have been addressed by the applicant and that agree that um, there should there will be no impact to the existing church service or the adjacent properties um, if should you choose to recommend a, a, a approval of this uh, application staff recommends the following conditions of approval that the special use permit shall allow the use of a temporary module building to be used for a private school Redeemer Academy school grades K through 12 the modular building shall not exceed 8,190 square feet and shall be installed at the south of the church building consistent with the site plan. Third, that the module building shall be removed no later than August 31st, 2026. And the fourth condition that the maximum number of students allowed to be enrolled at the school is 85. If the school desires to have a greater number of students, then it must apply to the BZA to amend the special use permit. A traffic study will be required at that time. Condition five, that the days and hours of operation shall be limited to Monday through Friday from 7 a.m., uh, the bell time of 8 a.m., to 5 p.m., the bell time of 3 p.m., and shall not conflict with the church service or large events. Condition six, that the applicant shall continue to maintain the landscape between the buildings and in front of the module as previously conditioned by the Board of Zoning Appeals. And seven, that no staging or queue in a school traffic will be allowed on Jack Bryan's Drive. 
We have uh, included in your agenda the previous letter um, from the property owner, again, echoing support for the continued use of this property, as well as um, a letter that was put in your uh, agenda packet from Stan Bennett talking about um, their continued use of the property as well. So that is in there for your review and approval. Um, review and consideration, Matt Taylor of SEC is here for if you have any questions, as am I. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Aguilera? Thank you. Um, anything the applicant would like to add? All right. Uh, any questions for the applicant? All right. We'll move to the public hearing. Is there anyone present wishing to speak for or against this application? If you'd come forward. Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing and open the floor for any further discussion or motion. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the application with the additional conditions outlined by staff in the application. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? If not, if you'll call the roll for us. Ms. Foy? Aye. Mr. Tibbs? Aye. Vice Chair Halliburton? Aye. Chair Young? Aye. All right. Appreciate everybody's time. That one's been approved. Um, next, we'll move to application Z24036 by Mr. Brian McGee, requesting a special use permit in order to construct and establish an accessory apartment in a single family residential RS15 zone. This is for property located along the east side of East Overall Creek Road, south of Constantine Drive. Uh, the property address is 5505 East Overall Creek Road. If you'd review this for us, Ms. Lewis. Yeah, Chair Young, if I may give a brief introduction for okay. Ms. Lewis. So Ms. Lewis is our newest pl planner in the planning department. She's been with us since July. Uh, Ms. Lewis received her bachelor's degree in urban planning from uh, Miami University of Ohio. Uh, we think she's going to be a great ac asset to this board and to the department uh, in the, the coming months. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. Thank you, Chair. Um, as you said, this item is a special use permit application to establish an accessory apartment at 5505 East Overall Creek Road, which is southwest on the southwest side of town off of New Salem Highway and Old Salem Road. The applicant, Brian L. McGee, um, is requesting a special use permit for an accessory apartment for his son to use when home from college and in-laws to use when visiting and staying with the family. The proposed accessory apartment will be located within the primary structure, and the primary structure is 28 feet and 7 and 5 eighths inches in height, and the accessory apartment will be 698 square feet. The property is zoned RS15 and in the Belmore um, single family residential subdivision. So, according to our standards, to um, construct an accessory apartment in a single family residential zoning district. You have to get a special use permit and go before the Board of Zoning Appeals. The applicant has submitted a plot plan, which I am trying to go to. Um, as proposed, the accessory apartment complies with the applicable bulk development standards. The proposed accessory apartment will be 698 square feet and the principal structure is 28 feet and 7 and 5 eighths inches in height. The minimum, the minimum setbacks for the principal structure are 40 feet from the front property line and 12 and a half feet from the side property lines. and. 30 feet from the rear property line, and if this would load, you would be able to see that on the plot plan that the applicant does comply with those standards. Um, as depicted in the application site plan, the accessory apartment will be located above the attached garage. Um, the accessory apartment will have a kitchen, a bathroom, a walk in closet, a laundry room, and a living area and there will be no exterior entrance to the accessory apartment. You can only get to it from the bonus room, on, which is on the second floor inside the principal structure, and the applicant understands that at no time can they expand the accessory apartment 
into the bonus room as it would exceed the maximum 700 square feet. The proposed accessory apartment is integrated into the overall structure and will not be noticeable from the outside. In staff's review, we believe that this application complies with the minimum development standards. In addition, it is recommended that the applicant be required to complete and record the standard restriction on use of land document prepared by the city attorney. This document states that the accessory apartment can only be occupied by a family member or an invited guest and can not in any circumstance be used as a rental unit. Recording it memorializes the restriction to put future buyers or owners on notice. The applicant is aware of this standard and um, intends to comply with the requirements. And as required per section nine of the zoning ordinance, the applicant is required to provide evidence that they comply with the standards of general applicability and additional standards for accessory apartments. In review of the general standards, staff believes that this applicant and the proposed accessory apartment meets those standards. Additionally, staff believes that the proposed accessory apartment will not have any adverse effect to the character of the neighborhood as it will be constructed above the attached garage and integrated into the overall design of the structure. For the additional standards for accessory apartment uses, staff believes that this applicant and the accessory apartment has met the standards. The applicant has confirmed that the owner, Brian L. McGee, will reside on the property in the principal structure and the accessory apartment will only be used for family. He has agreed to record a restriction on use of land as recommended by the planning department for all accessory apartments. In conclusion, staff believes that this applicant has met the development standards, the general standards, and the additional standards for an accessory apartment and staff does recommend the approval of the special use permit subject to the following four conditions of approval. Condition one, the owners of the property for this accessory apartment unit shall occupy at least one of the dwelling units on the premises and members of the family or invited guests shall occupy the other dwelling unit. In no event shall either of these units be used as a rental unit for non-family members. Condition two, the bonus room shall not be converted to be or be used as part of the accessory apartment. Condition three, prior to applying for building permits, the applicant shall complete and record the restriction on use of land document prepared by the city attorney, which shall limit the use of the accessory apartment to only what is allowed in the zoning ordinance. And condition four, the applicant shall obtain all necessary permits with the building and codes department and shall comply with all code requirements. I'm here for any questions, and I believe Mr. McGee is here as well. Thank you. Any questions for staff at this point? Yeah, I have one. Um, in looking at the application and the statement about the bonus room is not a part of the application, I'm a little confused because all the ingress and egress to the apartment itself has to come through the bonus room, correct? Yeah. So how can we, I guess, isolate the application, the, the apartment from the bonus room when all the access comes through the bonus room. Yeah, so the accessory apartment in the conditions is limited to the 698 square feet. So the bonus room is not a part of the accessory apartment. I guess not to say that they won't use it, but it's not a part of that 698 square feet apartment. Yeah, I heard, I heard that, but I still, you know, that makes this separate from the rest. Yeah, of the what room. makes it separate from the bonus room, and and for that matter, the the fifth the so the fifth bedroom and bathroom. Yeah, and the the way this is set up on the the se second floor, um, you know, they they are going to have to use that bonus room, you know, and that's not saying that they're that they're not going to be able to go out in it. What we have is, you know, the the way this particular accessory apartment is not designed that's where their access is it's just not intended for it to be part of that accessory dwelling unit that's in no way stopping them from going out there and spending time with the family that lives in the rest of the house um, in this case what we're doing is they're going to submit building permits we're going to approve the building permits potentially based on where they're telling us that wall is going to be and you know that this one you know may very well have some enforcement difficult difficulties but under our um definition it meets the the standard for an accessory apartment 
Thank you. All right, any further questions for staff? I know um, an external entrance is not included in the plan, but should that be a potential condition for approval? Because I don't see that that's listed. Um, it is not a part of the plan now, so. Do you, do you mean from the standpoint to stop them from adding one later? Yes. Um, so at this point, if they were to add that at a later date, we would say that they're amending their special use permit. They would be back before this body. Any further questions? Thank you. Uh, Mr. McGee, anything you'd like to add to the application? Uh, my wife and I were just going to say that uh, it's going to be for our family only, and uh, we have no intention of putting a second entrance in it. We want the uh, it to be um, not seen by any of the neighbors. You know, we don't want it looking different than the rest of the, the neighborhood, which it is a, a nice uh, neighborhood that you know we chose to, to live there. So, um, and as far as you know going through the bonus room, you know, we designed the house for my wife and I and my son to have that for family use, but uh, an option for her parents or my parents to be able to have a place to go as, as they are older. So um, that's pretty much it. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. McGee? Thank you, sir. At this time, we'll conduct a public hearing. Is there anyone present wishing to speak for or against this application, if you'd come forward? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing and open the floor for any further discussion or motion on this one. This, is, this application is a little different than what we've seen in the past with um, uh, accessory apartment but um, I'm still gonna make a motion that we approve subject to all staff comments second have a motion and a second any further discussion if not all I'm uh, sorry you can call the roll for us miss Foy aye mr. tips no vice chair Halliburton aye chair young aye Thank you. That application has been approved. Uh, next, we'll move to application Z24034 by Mr. Clyde Roundtree of Huddleston Steel Engineering on behalf of Veterans Plaza LLC. They're requesting an amendment to an existing special use permit to operate a self service storage facility in a commercial fringe zone. Uh, this is for property located along the east side of Veterans Parkway, south of Cloister Drive. The property address is 4558 Veterans Parkway. Uh, the application includes a construction of an additional 60,000 square feet self-service storage building. Uh, Mr. Barbie, if you'd review that for us. Good afternoon, Chair, Chairman Young and members of the Murfreesboro Board of Zoning Appeals. Uh, this next application before you is a request for a special use permit for a self-service storage facility at 4546 <laughs> Veterans Parkway. Um, this total facility square footage is approximately 58,000 square feet within uh, three stories. Um, it's also a climate controlled self service storage facility. Um, surrounding properties to the north are zoned planned residential district and is currently developed as the cloister subdivision. Uh, properties to both the east and the west are outside the city limits of Murfreesboro and are currently zoned RM, which is residential medium density in the Rutherford County area. Um, property to the south is zoned planned commercial district as well as planned residential district and is currently not developed as, as vacant land. Um, subject property is located in the commercial fringe district. Uh, the commercial fringe district is intended to be a transition between more intensive commercial land uses and the less intensive residential land uses. Um, so this, as such, this special use permit is only is, is required for um, self-service storage facilities within this district in order to make sure that potential negative impacts have been abated 
Uh, some of the impacts that we review during the site plan review portion of this are additional traffic, sound, light, and in this particular case, any um, impact from shadow from the three-story building. Uh, staff has worked diligently with the design team and with the applicant. Um, they've been able to abate our concerns uh, as far as the shadow by providing um, what we would call a shadow study that shows where the shadow will fall on the adjacent properties throughout the year in order to make sure that uh, those homes on the northern property line and the cloister subdivision that might have swimming pools in their yards, things that they would enjoy during the summer would not be in shadow um, and having an adverse impact on, on their enjoyment of their land. Uh, in addition, they have provided the required type D buffer along the northern property line against the residential property and the southern property line also against the residential portion there as well. Um, they've also helped fine tune the photometric plan in order to make sure that there's no light spill over uh, beyond our minimum half foot candle that's allowed onto surrounding properties. Uh, staff has reviewed the standards of general applicability and the additional standards for this special use and believe that it meets all of those standards. Um, we do have the applicants here today. Um, if the board were to decide to approve this application, staff would like to include the following six recommendations, uh, the six conditions of approval. Uh, the, special, the special use permit approval is for a three-story, approximately 58,000 square foot climate-controlled self storage facility. The applicant shall provide a 15-foot wide Type D buffer per Section 27 of the Murfreesboro Zoning Ordinance along the northern property line. The board, this Board of Zoning Appeal approval shall supersede all previous approvals by the Board of Zoning Appeals. The structure shall comply with the Murfreesboro Design Guidelines and be consistent with the architectural building elevations submitted with this application. The Board of Zoning Appeals approval does not imply approval of the site plan. A site plan should be submitted for review and approval subject to compliance with the Murfreesboro Zoning Code and the design guidelines, and the owner shall operate a self-service storage facility in compliance with this zoning ordinance, self-service self storage facilities, additional standards as set forth in Section 9D2UUU. I'm available if you have any questions, and our applicant, Mr. Huddleston and Clyde Roundtree, are both available as well. Um, the, the one time I don't print the site plan and bring it to me is when the screen acts up. Is there a way to get the... <laughs> uh, I'm the having item? trouble myself. We can share my screen. I think I've got it up. I apologize for the... There we yeah. go. Yeah. So the building that Mr. Barbie was discussing is the centrally located building here. Is that one new? What was the difference from our original approval in 2016? Yeah, so the original approval is the building to the, the back, the long, on the, the kind of finger headed back to the creek. Was the original approver correct, by, Brad? That's correct. The previous approval was, I believe, a 53,000 square foot storage facility that you'll see to the east side of the building that is included in this submittal. Um, and unfortunately, I can't get yeah, it's, any of the images. It's locked up. It's what's noted as store place two there, number two. And store place one is what the current application is for. And the height of those buildings are different, or are they the same? What, what, where, I guess where's the shadow? Yeah, so the, done? The, the store place two was a one-story building. Store place three, and let me, I will show you the elevations. And on, So there, the, the elevation, that's a three-story building is what the uh, special use permit is for today. So, kind of, go ahead. Well, just that's the one stretching almost boundary to boundary within setbacks. But. And I did want to point out that the design team did uh, work with staff in reducing the left-hand portion of that building. Um, it was originally three stories along the full extent in order to reduce potential shadow overlay onto the neighbors at the cloister, they did reduce the building height to two stories on that left-hand side, as you can see in the, the image. Is staff comfortable that those changes uh, will take care of the people to the north there and that along that cloister drive? 
based on the shadow study uh, that was provided in that reduction in building height it appears so. What's the distance between the rear boundary line of say somebody that's in the cloister to the structure itself? Well unfortunately I can't measure it. There's a 15 foot uh, type D buffer that's there. There's going to be probably a foot of curbing and then 21 feet of drive aisle. Okay. 21 drive aisle, then three feet of uh, base of building area. We just don't want to, my hesitation with something like this is there is a, we approved back when I first got on this board, a church and the height of the uh, church was, I don't know, I'm going to call it 60 feet. I, I don't recall what it was exactly. And the church literally backs up to it's within 10 to 15 feet of the property line of of the neighbors Something similar to this yeah and it is just it 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 the view shed for the neighbors uh is awful i mean they're looking at it the uh and so we i just want to be careful here because now granted it sounds like this is more like 60 to 75 feet but I'm telling you that it, that after seeing that and then listening to the neighbors after the fact, I've always regretted having uh, a building of that size right next to uh, a residential neighborhood. Yes, sir, Mr. Halliburton. That was actually the example you gave is the same example I believe our assistant director, Mr. Blomley, um, <laughs> brought up in our review meetings, uh, and that. <laughs> was the impetus for the reduction in building height in the shadow study to try to make sure we're, we're doing what we can uh, to make sure that that situation doesn't reoccur. I saw the, the, the shadow study flash up there. What's an acceptable fl shadow study it's for the neighbors there? Uh, amount of time in shadows or what's the? Um, I believe they have done, and I still can't get to it. Um, is the design? Clive, can you explain the shadow study, or is your engineer here? Can you better explain the timing of the, the shadow study that we <coughs> provided? Hi, I'm David Kidd. I'm the architect on this project. Um, uh, without the drawing, I'll have to just verbally describe this. And uh, the way this is. Um, the shadow is falling that we have three different studies um, that we did one at the summer solstice one at the winter solstice and then um, the other at the uh, equinox and basically in the summer the shadow pretty much falls on the property that's being developed the entire time the winter however uh, in the at sunrise and sunset it will pass over the neighbors' homes, um, but it's it's the most dramatic part of that is right at the setting or the rising of the sun, and then once that is, you know, as the day goes on, the sh the shadow diminishes back to the development property. So the duration of that, I'm not sure I could really. Yeah. Elaborate. It's kind of the first shadow study I've seen. I, it's what, what, you know, what's acceptable? To Ten minutes, thirty minutes, an hour on a certain. Yeah. I'm just not sure what what accounts for. A, and so you you know right now what I have in front of you is the summer solstice, right? Mm -hmm. And then this that just popped onto your screen is the winter solstice. And the top picture is sunrise. The bottom is sunset. And then I believe the third image is noon. So what, um, potentially, what is the height of the buffer um, that's gonna be on this side? Well, uh, I'll, I'll let Brad address that, but I, I will say that if you look at what the existing buffer is, I'm not sure the shadow's gonna go over that because they're very tall trees, but I'm not, I'm not gonna say those are gonna remain because I don't know. I believe looking at the design now that pretty much the majority of the lot will be cleared. Uh, Mr. Roundtree is shaking his head in, in agreement. 
Um, so the buffer as planted will consist of six foot tall evergreen trees. Um, over the years, you know, in 15, 20 years, you're going to get hopefully another 10 feet or more of growth. Um, of course, that all depends on soil conditions, rainfall, right. all of those different things. So you're looking at the next 10 years, another 10 feet of growth, so 16 to 20 feet. I guess I'm still trying to figure out what's an acceptable shadow study in the... And in the our ordinance doesn't have a standard um, for amount of shadow that's acceptable to fall on a neighboring property. <coughs> our, our concern with this is we did notice that several of the neighboring properties to the north, there was at least one that was almost centered in the image that had a swimming pool that had been constructed. And we thought, trying to be considerate of, of the neighbors that being in shadow during the summer would not be mm -hmm. not be something that would be preferable by anyone. Sure. Mr. Blomley's behind me. <laughs> He's going to save us. <laughs> my, my shadow line. That's right. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I think the shadow was part of it. Um, and, well, and first of all, good afternoon, uh, good afternoon, Chairman Young and members of the board. I think the shadow line was part of it, but I think um, Mr. Halliburton, I thought of the exact same thing when looking at this about about the, the, the church from 10, 15 years ago. Um, and I think that not only the shadow line, but, but also just thinking about having a tall building looming near those, looming near the rear property lines of those homes to the north. And so that's why we asked them to reduce the height of the building to a two-story building, just so that it wouldn't be so imposing. I do think in that instance with the church, um, that church building was probably within 15 feet of the, of the property line. And here you'll have a little bit greater separation. Yeah. Um, so it was our request of the applicants that they reduce that building to two stories um, at its northern end. And, and they did that to help address our concerns about the building you know, looming so prominently uh, next to those, next to the backyards of those homes. So you're comfortable this this plan and this the setbacks and reducing of that one is taking care of that northern property line. I I, th I think it's it's helped address our our concern. I think I think like I said, the additional separation of you know I think of let's see 15 plus 21 plus four plus one. Um, so it's it's about probably 40 45 feet off the property line. So it's a little bit greater distance. Um, and so I think that it's helped to address our concern, um, but ultimately it's the board's decision as to whether or not they've done enough to, to, um, alleviate any incompatibility between the proposed use and the adjacent residential uses. So Brad, what's, what's the, is there a fence? We've already talked about the type a buffer, but is there a fence between? There's also a fence that's proposed within that buffer as well. Do we, do, can we see pictures of the fence? Like, is it well <laughs> a, opaque? Is Some it, can. It, it was, should be a six foot vinyl privacy fence, okay. if, I, if I recall correctly. Um, I would love to be able to show you a detail, but um, unfortunately that's not possible right now. We're getting one. I was about to say, do you remember which plant, which sheet it's on, Brad? Typically it's on the detail page of the landscape design yeah I would be interesting to know how far the fence goes between that that <coughs> northern property line like does it go all the way the distance of the property does that make sense I believe I understand what you mean uh, as far as at full build out in all phases, it should go the full extent of the northern property. Line. Okay, that's what I'm asking. Um, as far as where it's located within that 15 foot section, um, I think that's something that's at the board's discretion. We typically want the plant materials on the exterior of the fence um, so that it's breaking up any hard surface or hard uh, view shed for the less intensive use. Um, but if the board would like it somewhere else, I, I think we would be open. I think the design team's open to that. So it looks like the landscaping ends where 
uh, storage number one, or wait a minute, storage number one ends. Since that drawing was added, it has been extended further, I believe. Well, and I'm completely blank now. Um, is it lot 16 maybe to the north? So let, let me ask a better question because we're usually we're usually seeing these uh, on planning commission in the site plan. So will this come before planning commission as a site plan? I don't recall if it will come through or if it, it will be on the agenda. I do not know if it will be an item that will be uh, on motion. I think that. Um, I don't believe that there are any public infrastructure improvements in Veterans Parkway that would be required, which would make it eligible for administrative review. But I think that, um, and I'll look towards legal, but I think that they could, that as a function of your um, uh, approval, you could condition it upon the Planning Commission's review of the site plan rather than um, administrative review and approval. Mr. Hankins, Mr. Tully, would that be an appropriate condition? I think so. Yeah. Thank you. Do we have any other um, structures in this area, especially adjacent to residential that are, that are this tall? Um, in that area, not that I can think of off the top of my head. Um, there are two, two places I can think of where we have very tall structures adjacent to residential property. The first one is the one that Mr. Halliburton and Mr. Blomley have referenced, and the second one is off of Joe B. Jackson Parkway north of I-24. Uh, there's a large industrial structure that is between or that is adjacent to a residential neighborhood and it's the very similar situation that we discussed earlier same um, zoning this no the the zoning in off of Joe B Jackson is probably heavy industrial or light industrial adjacent to a planned development oh. and residential district hmm. she touched on this with the the landscapes showing stopping halfway down the building is this an old plan or is that gonna this i don't see why we don't protect the rest uh, of the neighborhood there if i could just get it to scroll up about an inch i could tell you um the lands we had requested that the landscape buffer was extended around down the northern property line it should go to roughly half of the store place three building about where that yellow square is yeah, flashing. I think it was between 12 and 13 or 13 and 14 is where it was going to end up getting extended to. Why is was there some barrier there? Why would you stop yeah. there? I'm looking, I'm kind of looking at the aerial and it appears there's you looking at an aerial okay. trying to translate the cover sheet of our agenda to seem like there's homes all the way through 16, 17. Can we there pull up an three. aerial? That area behind um, that large square there is vacant land. It's going to be just green. Um, when was that? Clean, green area. It's not going to be developed yet. That was the process. That was the thought process was that we wouldn't require the buffer to be extended down until that area was further developed uh, because more than likely when they come through to develop that area, it will damage the buffer and cause it to be removed and replaced. Do we have a recent aerial photo? Because storage two is already developed. No. Right? So this no. is a so vacant. It, yeah. This it has a, a special plan. use permit. Sorry, Brad. It has uh, a approved special use permit, but they have not constructed that. No construction has been. Okay. I was that a little confused. It's an aerial photograph. Okay. Good afternoon, Chairman Young, members of the Board of Zoning Appeals. I'm Bill Huddleston with Huddleston Steel Engineering. I uh, just wanted to address that landscape buffer. Right now we're showing it extended a little further than what you see. Uh, we're showing it extended to the property line between 12 and 13, and that gets us plenty east of the building that we're considering here. Of course, when we go to uh, develop the store place two building, we'll extend that buffer continuing okay. east all the way to uh, as far as you need, need us to extend it, but at least uh, we'll be extending it east to the edge of that development will the fence go along with it yes sir okay and yet we were 
laughing uh, because in our meetings with staff, Matthew did bring up the church situation and under no circumstances did he want that and that's why we were uh, asked to reduce that end of the building to two stories and we were happy to comply. We were, our, the owner was less happy but glad to do it to get <laughs> approval. Okay, so the, so the building that's running vertical, I guess, on that is that's phase two that will have to come back to us at some point? Oh, yes. Uh, Y'all have approved it, I guess, a special use permit. And in fact, Mr. Halliburton, I don't know if you remember, but Planning Commission approved this entire, uh, or were favorable on this entire development in the past. Uh, Tom Reed was the original developer, but now Store Place is, is buying it. And I don't know if y'all are familiar with Store Place. We've been doing business with them here in this community uh, for over 25 years. Uh, the first development we did for them um, was on Thompson Lane, uh, right beside Dickens Turf and Supply. Uh, and the most recent development we did for them is on Memorial Boulevard, just north of Publix, uh, across the street from the Veterans uh, Hospital. And so they do a, a very good development. They've done this entire store, store place and retail in Nolansville. It's very nice. They don't sell it. We're now dealing with uh, the uh, offspring of the original developers, in, in, in including the developer. I mean, there's no question that, uh, and this is getting really off topic, but you know, some of these uh, storage facilities are nicer than some of the homes that they're around at times. Um, you know, it's just my biggest concern is not replicating the mistake we've made in the past. We understood that and we heard that loud and clear in staff. Uh, we will, we hope to get approval today and then we will be bringing you uh, site plans and the architecture. Again, David Kidd is the architect. You saw some of that architecture today and we're fine with having it up for discussion. We don't have to be on a consent agenda or anything. We're happy to discuss it with planning commission also. Have you dealt with shadow plans before? This is our first shadow plan. Okay, mine too, okay. Just curious how to help, help how to interpret it, whether it's acceptable or not. But I guess it's kind of a judgment thing. So, thanks. Thank you. I, I've got a qu another question for staff. How many three-story storage facilities have we approved that's either in a uh, commercial fringe or as adjacent to a residential as this? It's not some information that I have on hand right now, but I'll be glad to research that and get in some response information back to you. I'm, I'm having a, an, an issue with the, the adverse effect on, a, on adjacent property or the immediate vicinity. So I'm, I'm having trouble crossing number one and number two of the special use permit requirements, given the size. Any further questions for staff? We'll let the applicant fill in some more blanks if they choose to. Thank you. If you'd like to come forward and. Uh, just to give a little context um, on the height there where we dropped it down to two stories. And if you look at it, it's, it's about 26 feet tall at that point. And if you get a two story house, you know, the, the upper eave is probably about 20 feet. So, and then you've, you've got the slope of the roof so just to give you a little bit of an example of the height that we're talking about at the lower end now it does step up but even when it does step up we're still four at the very highest point we're still about four feet below the allowable vertical height in the underlying cf zone so and, I just, and what is that total height the the allowable height's 45 and it's it's like so you're at 41 41 2 or something like that so any further questions for the applicant or anything else you'd like to add all right next we'll go to the public hearing is there anyone present wishing to speak for or against this application if you'd come forward Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing and open the floor for any further discussion or motion. All 
I mean, I think the applicants try to keep from what's uh, my uh, pain uh, that we don't replicate what I've what we've already talked about three or four times, um, and I, you know, sometimes I wonder why these storage facilities even come before us, just because the ones that are being developed are really nice developments these days. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm assuming signs went out on this, um, you know, that we don't have anybody from this subdivision uh, here is part, I don't know that we can gauge our decision on that, but there's no input on this application. Um, you know, I think with the landscaping and the, you know, I know we talked, I don't remember for the fence, we call it the Smotherman fence on Joby Jackson, if that was in relation to uh, a storage facility or it was a manufacturing facility. But I think, you know, we went to eight feet on something of that nature. I don't know that, that that's necessary, but it's a topic of conversation. Um, I, anything to help with the transition between this development and the neighborhood. Um, but I, I think the applicants tried to, to reduce the impact by going to two stories on that end. It's hard to visualize that. I agree yeah. with you. They've, they've worked with staff to address the concerns. Um, so I know in my experience that Oftentimes, you hear property owners complain about a facility being that's that they have to look at, and oftentimes the facility was there before they were. Right. And I don't have a whole lot, you know, to say about that with other than what well, you knew it was there. Now we have a new application that's going to put up a structure. That doesn't quite fit the resident, you know, the area as far as at least right there with the residences, and it's not affecting every homeowner, but it's certainly affecting some of them. That whether there's shadows or not, they're going to walk out their back door and they're going to see this, you know, large structure out there. Now, you you point, and I guess if staff knew of any complaints, I'm assuming. Proper notice went out, proper signage went out, and nobody chose to complain. Is that a fair statement? So we, we did um, make proper notice on this, letters, uh, newspaper, and I have a photo of the sign on site. Um, to myself, I know I received one phone call asking what the sign was about. Um, and I explained the application to them and let them know about this meeting. Um, you know, and, you know, I can't say they were necessarily warm to it, but they're, they're also not, not here. I let them know that they could email me something as well, so. But if, I, if I'm understanding correctly, a portion of this has already been approved. Is that a correct statement? That, that is correct. A yeah. single story portion of this has already been approved. Yeah. So they knew, or they could, know, if they did their research, um, depending on when it was approved and depending on when their house was built, they knew a storage facility was eventually going to be there. A single story. I agree. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Which, which if I'm seeing an amendment or, you know, a, a request for an additional one, I'm thinking it's probably the same as what was done before. Yeah. Not, not a giant three story structure. And, and I hear you a little bit about the, that they're working with staff, but they worked with staff on a quarter of the building to reduce it, not taking off an entire story. It's going to be hard to tell from a photo, but is there any that would show, you know, we've got drawings of the building. Is there any in relation to how it's going to sit on the lot? And um, hard to get a visual of what it's going to look like if you were standing there. Yeah, it's it's kind of hard to tell. That perspective was probably one of the better um, on this. You know, this is the elevation that would be on that north edge. 
But again, this is flat, and I'm not sure how the grade changes on to where the, those adjoining residents would be looking from. Well, I mean, we, we may be at a stalemate here, but I'm going to start something and we'll see where it goes. I'm going to make a motion we approve uh, subject to all staff comments and that it would come before the Planning Commission for further site plan approval. Um, I'll second that motion. Um, and the question at that time, if are we the only board that could say, hey, this is too tall, that close to the, or would the Planning Commission have that ability? Or is that, it, that, not, is that what you're asking the Planning Commission to do or not? I'll, I'll chip in. Mr. Bre uh, Mr. Barbie had to step out for a moment. The Planning Commission actually does have authority by the zoning ordinance to um, place conditions on the review of site plans in order to minimize or to mitigate negative impacts on adjacent residential properties. So. Um, if the board were to approve it today, the Planning Commission would also have the authority to review how it impacts with or how it, how it um, interfaces with that adjacent residential to the north and place uh, conditions on its approval of the site plan that it sees fit to mitigate that impact. I guess we're kind of kicking the can to the Planning Commission at that point. If it's, yeah. <laughs> um, well, what if the board, what if the BZA made a motion to approve a one-story plan? What would happen then? I think since that would be such a, a different plan than what they are proposing right now, I think that if that's the way the, the BZA was leaning, that a deferral would probably be the, the more appropriate motion. Okay. So that, that would give... Uh, you know, it, it, if there were, um, if you wanted staff and the applicant to continue to work on addressing your concerns, whether that's in making more of the build or, you know, modifications to the building, modifications to the buffer, we'd be happy to do that if, you, if, if the board chose to defer. And I, I would assume that the applicants would be, would be willing to, to meet with us and discuss, discuss that as well. I think they reluctantly shook their head, yes. Uh, certainly being comfortable with, with what we've talked about and not going on a leap of faith or turning over the Planning Commission may be more appropriate at this point. Uh, um, well, I mean, I guess um, since we don't have a fifth member, if it's two for and two against, what does that mean? Uh, if the motion right now is to approve so if it if if it's a two two vote then the motion to approve would fail okay you'd be back just to the item as presented okay which then you could either do a motion to deny or a motion to defer. right right so we need to proceed with the motion to approve i had a motion in a second is that correct well i mean i could or do we want to the, could i not if uh, we chose to defer Yes, if, if you want to withdraw your motion and, and Chair Young, if you want to withdraw your second, then the item would just be, the, then the motion would be withdrawn and you could do a motion to defer at that point. I think the applicant, I can't speak for the applicant, but I am going to speak for the applicant. I think you're going to be better off if we defer this and try to work this out versus, because if, if we go 2-2, two, two, then it's denied. Um, I don't know that that's in your best interest. And... Um, again, I can't speak for the board, um, and I don't know if you can make it work or not, you know, it being two stories versus three, um, but anyway. Hi, Chairman and more members of the board. Um, we are willing to work with the Board of Zoning Appeals, whatever is necessary, and we have complied in the past with that, and so um, whatever you guys feel is, is necessary, we will work to do that. I will say... Um, with our history with Murfreesboro, we have always built uh, very attractive 
long-term sustainable buildings in Murfreesboro. And we have been in business for a while in Murfreesboro. And unfortunately, my father uh, cannot be here because he had knee surgery. Um, I myself am taking and looking to join the business as well. And I have a long-term approach to Murfreesboro and want to be involved and want to continue to uh, build a strong relationship with you guys and to continue to develop and work in Murfreesboro. So my point is I'm willing and we're willing to work with you guys if necessary. So thank you. Okay, I'm going to uh, remove my motion. Okay, I'll remove it as well and, and no, I appreciate your working with us to address concerns. I mean, yes. the, the building, like we said, the developments, is that not, not really what the issue is, just kind of where it's located and the unique of this, of this property. So appreciate your willingness to work with staff. Yes. So, so I'll, make, I'll make a motion to defer. Second. A motion a second. Any further discussion? How would you call the roll for us? Ms. Foy? Aye. Mr. Tibbs? Aye. Vice Chair Halliburton? Aye. Chair Young? Aye. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. Let me get his name in the record. I'm sorry. Yes. Uh, my name is Jimmy Freeman. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Mr. Freeman. Our next application is Z24035 by Mr. Wayne Overman on behalf of St. Rose of Lima Catholic Church. They're requesting an amendment to an existing special use permit for an existing institutional group assembly use in a single family residential zone. This is a property, property located at 1522 Stonewall Boulevard and 1601 North Tennessee Boulevard. The application includes the replacement of several accessory structures and the construction of additional parking stalls. Uh, I know we are short on time. I'm Holly Smith, one of the planners in your planning department. The particular property that you have in hand is the St. Rose of Lima's church site. A portion of that site is RS10, where it has a single family house that was approved through BZA in 2008 for uh, various groups coming in and having meeting space in there seven days a week. They are not proposing to change that use. However, they have an existing carport structure that's a little bit on the ugly side uh, in the slide, I think just after this one, uh, that they're wanting to remove. And then a existing storage building, remove it as well and just replace them with slightly enlarged structures and pushing that kind of storage building a little bit further back towards the carport. And then you can kind of see on that drawing that we were just on the uh, perpendicular parking. Currently, they're parallel parking along the driveway. So this will allow them to have six additional parking spaces. And it'll provide better clearance between the parking that's happening on the north side of the driveway into the area to the ones that they're putting on the south side. No landscaping will change. Uh, no uses that they're currently already approved for for the site will change. It's just remove, replace carport, storage building, and change the parking from parallel to perpendicular. With that, Mr. Wayne Oberman and the church uh, leadership is here for any questions that you may have. And the only staff condition that we have, we did look at the uh, special general assembly uh, standards and they meet all of the general standards as well as the specific standards. And the one condition of approval is BZA does not imply approval of a site plan. A site plan shall be submitted for review and approval subject to Murfreesboro zoning ordinance and design guidelines. So that'll be a separate approval by uh, planning department or planning commission. With that, we ask that you open public hearing and we're here for any questions of myself or the applicant. Thank you. Any questions for staff? Uh, Mr. Overman, anything you'd like to add to the application? Uh, just uh, Wayne Overman, uh, 123 Spence Creek Lane. Uh, just a couple of comments. Number, first off, Chairman Young and the board members, thank you for your time uh, and, and commitment to the city. I know how long it takes to sit through these meetings. Um, I want to also uh, thank the planning staff. They have just been excellent to work with. I'm a re retired civil engineer and haven't done this for a while, but they've been really good to work with. I want to point out two members with us today, the pastor of our church, Father Chris Nunez, and the principal of our school, Sister Catherine Marie. Uh, we are a very large parish. We have over 3,000 households. We have 71 ministries that serve this. We use this building for the ministries, some of the ministries to meet uh, uh, in order to conduct their activities. What we're trying to do 
We've used this facility for about 16 years in that capacity. We've had really no issues with it. Uh, I've got involved since my retirement with the church, and this is one of the areas we want to clean up a little bit. Uh, we've got some stuff sticking outside when we get it inside. Um, it, it needs an improvement. Uh, with that, we want to add a couple more parking spaces because we're encroaching on our own private drive with parallel parking. This gets them off the street and just kind of cleans up the whole area. So I'm hoping this is an easy one to approve and to go through. But again, thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. This time we'll conduct, conduct a public hearing. Is there anyone present wishing to speak for or against this application, if you'd come forward? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing and open the floor for any further discussion or motion. I'll move to approve subject to staff conditions. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? If not, if you'll call the roll for us. Ms. Foy? Aye. Mr. Chips? Aye. Vice Chair Halliburton? Aye. Chair Young? Aye. All right, that application has been approved. Thank everyone for the time. The next item is staff reports and other business. Oh, just got one thing. If, um, <laughs> our meeting is on September 25th um, next month. If we could get a poll of who's going to be here. We, we already have a couple items. I know there are a couple items yeah. potentially um, waiting out there that could be on that agenda, but, yeah. but we're going to go ahead and hit you up since we know we're having a meeting next month. Yes. Yeah. Move we adjourn. Yes, I'll <laughs> make sure I'm here. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everyone. We'll adjourn. All right.